31 organisations led by an FCA colour party took part in the Killarney Parade, for which the weather was mixed but failed to dampen the spirits of the hundreds watching. A big display of vintage cars was a particular attraction, stretching along the parade as it went its way through the main streets of the town. Scouts, girl guides, local sporting organisations all took part, and Muckler's House had a special display urging the preservation of our national heritage. Scouting returns to Killarney was the theme of the 5th Kerry Scout Troop, who made the best of the occasion to urge more support for scouting in Kerry. And the Kerry Mountain Rescue Group, engaged in a major comb-out of Carantool Mountain for a missing climber in the past few weekends, demonstrated their equipment and a message that their organisation needs more support. Piped bands, Irish dancing groups and special floats depicting St. Patrick were also in the parade. And there was a group of handicapped representing the Irish Wheelchair Association who drew particular applause in the biggest St. Patrick's Day parade that Killarney has seen in recent years. Drogheda had one of its biggest ever parades. It was led by an FCA colour party, followed by the local brass band, the organisers of the event. The salute was taken by Commandant Peter Sands, officer commanding B Company, 8th Battalion of the FCA. Commandant Sands retires next month, having led the parade for the past 25 years. Also on the reviewing platform, the Kian Corla, Mr. Paulik Faulkner. It was around 1903 that the Gaelic League in Limerick launched a campaign to have St. Patrick's Day made into a national holiday. And over the years, Limerick has always had one of the biggest parades in the country outside Dublin. This year, the celebrations began with the traditional blessing of the Shamrock and Sarsfield Barracks, followed by the big industrial parade. A civic delegation from Compare and Brittany, Limerick's twin city, attended and declared themselves highly impressed. The salute was taken at the reviewing platform by the mayor, Councillor Clem Casey. American Rasputas, one local publican dyed his beer green. Or to be more accurate, beer, shorts, orange. You could have any colour you wanted, provided it was green. Not of the customers seemed to mind. Smart but sombre was the note struck by the army at the head of Longford's parade, with the salute being taken by Posts and Telegraphs Minister Albert Reynolds. But there was no holding back the joyous mood of the day. The novelties among the 200 floats provided smiles, for after St. Patrick came Miss Piggy. And in a runaway bed, Prince Charles made sporting appearances too, to everyone's glee. As for the farmers, they made it clear just how they felt about the common market. And behind them, a strong breeze gave a cool reception to the ladies. It was Longford's seventh annual parade, and it's rated as the third largest in the country. In Sligo, the local piper Larry O'Dowd called a tune for the town's 11th consecutive and most successful ever parade. The chairman of the parade committee, Councillor Tommy Higgins, arrived at the reviewing platform on a pony and trap, driven by his fellow councillor, Willie Farrell. The 6th Battalion Army Band from Atlone were one of 14 bands taking part. 
included among the others were two from Straban. Youngsters in local scouting troops had a very special day and sporting groups were very well represented. Members of the local riding club turned out in great numbers and the large crowd gave a very warm reception to a group of Sligo gymnasts who recently represented Ireland and Europe. Minister for Agriculture Ray McCharry was in his hometown to review the parade and he was joined on the platform by Sligo's mayor, Tony McLaughlin. The entertainment had an international flavour, for included among the floats was one celebrating Sligo's twin town of Crozon in Brittany. There too were a group of Nigerian students who were attached to the local regional technical college. This year's premier award went to the local post office workers for their float depicting Sligo's improved telecommunication system. Gardaí estimated that a crowd of around 3,000 watched the parade, which began promptly at midday and lasted for almost one and a half hours. In Kingscourt, County Cavan, the parade was organised by the Community Council in association with local businesses. In fact, considerable emphasis was placed on the success of local industry. Among those on the reviewing platform was Tom Fitzpatrick, TD, Senator Seamus Dolan, Cahirlock of the Shannon, and Brian O'Brady, the County Cavan Development Officer. A large number of people turned out for the parade and, as usual, it was a big day for the youngsters. The Queen of Dunaree, a local beauty competition, has been attracting the cabin girls. And the local guild of the Irish Countrywomen's Association came up with this attractive float displaying some traditional crafts. The FCA-led Gorey's Parade passed Minister for State Lorcan Allen and his Fine Grail opponent in agriculture, Michael Darcy. There were seven bands, among them musicians from the Cultus Cultori Aaron, attraction from the past, a steam engine restored by Luke Byrne. The parade was Gorey's second in the tribute to the efforts of the junior chamber. These colourful scenes in Waterford City's traditional parade were repeated in most of the cities and towns of the South East. Here, some 110 units paraded through the city and past City Hall, where it was reviewed by the Minister of State, Mr. Jackie Fahey, who was joined on the platform by the Mayor and the members of the City Council in their robes. The salute was taken from units of the FCA and Stormwera, with many community groups taking part. But the entertainment value came from, and the loudest cheers were and applause were for, youth groups and the industrial floats that gave the crown, tumbling crown, Batman and Robin, and of course, Miss Piggy for Glamour. Other parades were held in Dungarvan, Kilkenny, Wexford, Gorey, Carrick, Castle, and Tullow. And in Ballyporeen tonight, a Cayley for the National Feast Day and to get in a little practice for that weekend visit with local 